Have you ever asked any programmer to explain the code he wrote a year ago? Or have you ever tried reading your own previously written code? It would become a very time consuming and tiring task guys if you had to reanalyze every block of code from scratch. Well, the best thing to do is add a comment. Hey guys, welcome back to a new session from Edureka. My name is Vajiha and today's topic is comments in Python. So let's just quickly move ahead and look at what's in store under this topic. Firstly, we shall understand what exactly comments mean and when to use them. Then I'll be showing you all how to write comments in Python and how they're going to be interpreted. Following that we will be looking at the types of comments that is single line and multi line comments and a few shortcuts related to them. And finally, we will be looking at doc string comments or to be more precise doc strings as comments. So I hope you're clear with this moving on towards the first topic of the session. What are comments? No, they are not something there just to increase the size of your code. But guys, they are indeed very meaningful. Comments are programmer coherent statements that describe what a block of code means and they get very useful, especially when you're writing large blocks of code. Say for example, you've developed some software previously and now you're working on something that's new and completely different. At this point of time, you find that your previous software is throwing some error. You would have completely forgotten what you did and how. So this is where comments come into picture. A good code actually consists of relevant comments. These comments actually increase the readability of the program, not just to the programmer, but to the others as well. Now that you know what are comments, let's move on and see when to use them. The best practice is to write comments as and how you proceed with your code. Comments are very useful, but only if they are implemented wisely. Just keep the following points in mind when you're commenting your code. Make sure your comments are very precise and clear and preferably short as well. They need to be as specific as possible to the block of code they are included with. Please make sure you use decent language guys and do not repeat your comments as they become redundant. Now that you know what are comments and their importance, let's see how to write them in Python. Comments in Python are preceded by a hash character. As you can see on the screen over here, I have a small example with some two lines of code. My first line is a comment and my second line is a print statement. Now let's move on towards a Jupyter notebook and see how this works. Now let's move on towards a Jupyter notebook and write some comments. All I'm going to do over here is I'll open a new Python notebook and I will rename this notebook to rename your notebook guys. All you have to do is click on the title. Give whatever title you want. And use rename. Like I've told you before, comments start with a hash character in Python. So here I'm going to write a comment preceded by a hash. As you can see my output, there is nothing related to the comment line and whatever I have printed in the print statement has been returned as my output. Now this is how comments work. They do not show up in your output. Now let's get back to our presentation and see how they are interpreted, which is exactly what is our next topic. Whenever the interpreter encounters a hash symbol, it omits whatever is present after that. The hash character actually tells the interpreter to stop reading whatever is present after that until the end of that line. So when you're writing comments, whatever is present after your hash character is going to be omitted by your interpreter. Now what if the hash character was present inside a string? Let's go to our Jupyter notebook and see what happens. I'm including a hash character within a string and I will run this. As you can see when I run this the string is returned which means a hash inside a string means a hash itself and nothing else. So you cannot write comments within a string. Okay, so I hope you've understood how to write comments. Now let us move ahead and see what are the types of comments. Comments can either be single line or multi line. Single line comments can either appear individually or in line with some other code. Multi line comments have to be preceded by a hash character in every line they appear. Now let's see a small example of single line comments. Like I've told you before, single line comments can appear either in an individual line or in line with some other code. Now let's move on towards a Jupyter notebook and write some single line comments. I'll just create a heading over here to create a heading. All you have to do is go to code select heading. Give whatever heading you want as your heading 
and prefix it by a hash. A single hash tells that it's H1 level heading. Two hashes tell that it's H2 and so on. You can use the heading level of your choice. Here I prefixed my heading by a single hash which means it's of level H1. Now let's write some single line comments. As you can see over here, my first line of code is a comment line. I've prefixed this line by a hash character. And in my last line, I have an inline comment. This inline comment is present with some part of the code. As you can see in the output, none of the comments have been returned. Now let's get back to our presentation and see how multi line comments work. Like I've already told you, multi line comments can appear anywhere in your code, but each line needs to be prefixed by a hash character. For example, as you can see on your screens, I have a hash character present in the first two lines of my code. After that, I have some code followed by it. You can see in the output that none of these lines have been returned. Now let's go to our Jupyter Notebook and write some multi line comments. As you can see over here, I have three initial comment lines and all three have been prefixed by a hash. After that, I have some code and you can see in the output that none of the comment lines have been returned and whatever code is present after that, an output is returned based on this code. Now, typing a hash everywhere might be a problem and many of us would not like to do so. Let's look at some shortcut methods of how to comment multiple lines at once. All you have to do is type your multi line comments first. Hold the control key and left click wherever you want to insert a hash character. Just like how I'm showing you all and then type it once and it appears wherever I have inserted the cursor as you can see on the screens. Now, in case you want to remove multiple hash characters all at once, do the same thing. Hold the control key, click on wherever you want to remove the hash character from and press the backspace key. As you can see, from two lines, I removed a hash character in a single go. So these are some shortcut methods to comment multiple lines. Many of us think that comments and doc strings are same. Now let's move ahead and see what are doc strings and whether they are actually comments or not. Doc strings are not actually comments, but they are documentation strings. These strings are written within triple quotes. They are not assigned to any variable and many a times they are used as comments as well. Now you'd be thinking what is the difference between doc strings and comments? Doc strings are not omitted by the interpreter. Unlike comments, comments are omitted by your interpreter and nothing present after the hash character is going to be read by it. On the other hand, Doc strings are strings that describe something about the code. Doc strings actually tell what some function is going to do, whereas the comments will tell how it is going to do. So, this is the difference between doc strings and comments. Now, let's go to our Jupyter notebook and see their functionality. Like I've told you before, doc strings are written within triple quotes. As you can see in the output, when I execute this, it returns the string itself. Whereas in case of a comment, when I execute a comment, it does not return anything. Which means the interpreter does not omit doc strings, whereas it omits the comment. Now these doc strings are efficiently used when you want to describe something about a class or a function or something else. Now these doc strings can either appear in your output or they can be omitted based on where you're going to place them. Let's try to place a doc string initially before the code starts.
as you can see in my output the doc string has not been returned whereas when i use the doc string individually without any code and i executed it you could see that it had returned the string itself but when i include the doc string before the code and after that i've included some code lines and i run this you can see that only the output for my code is present and nothing related to the doc string has been returned as my output now let's try to include a doc string after some code As you can see over here when I included the doc string after the code it has returned the output for the code as well as the string itself. So when you're making use of doc strings just be specific of whether you want it to be returned in your output or not. Many a times these strings are called rather than writing it again and again. So I hope you've understood what are comments and doc strings as well. Okay so this was the last topic of this session. So I hope you've enjoyed and learned something new in this session. Please make sure to practice as much as possible guys because that is how you learn and if you have any suggestions or queries please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest take care and goodbye